Hello friends, welcome back to Radiology Short Cases. Today we have a neuroradiology case. A 24-year-old female with history of eclampsia and seizures presented in emergency OPD and her NCCT head was performed. This is the first image, axial CT. We can see ill-defined hypodensities involving bilateral frontal lobes predominantly within the white matter. Second set of images shows almost similar findings. There are uh, ill-defined white matter hypodensities involving frontoparietal lobes and they are uh, in, uh, in parasagittal location. So findings were suggestive of basogenic edema and the diagnosis of PRESS was kept. PRESS stands for posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome which is also known as reversible posterior cerebral edema syndrome and posterior reversible leukoencephalopathy. Now what are the imaging findings? On CT, we will see hypodensities in the white matter. Uh, most commonly, it is involved. Most commonly, it involves parieto occipital regions, and symmetric involvement is present. Similarly, in MRI, uh, affected areas usually reflect vasogenic edema. So, on T1, they appears hypodense, hypointense. On T1, post contrast images, patchy variable enhancement may be present. On T2, affected areas appear hyperintense and DWI is usually normal. Sometimes hyperintensity is due to edema, which is also known as T2 shine through effect, and true restricted diffusion may be present if there is infarction. On EDC, because there is no restricted diffusion, so signal will be hyperintense only. On GRE and SWI, there may be presence of micro hemorrhages in 9 to 50% of the cases. MRA may show patterns of vesclopathy, vessel irregularity, focal vasoconstriction or dilatation uh, and it will appear as a string of bead appearance and MRV will be normal in PRESS syndrome. Now PRESS can be divided into uh, two types. One is typical PRESS and second is atypical PRESS. In typical PRESS, it is because of the vasogenic edema within the occipital and parietal region in 70 to 90% of the cases because of the posterior, uh, posterior cerebral artery supply affects, um, is affected. In press, distribution is the key. Mainly it is present in the watershed areas including frontal, inferior temporal, cerebellar and brainstem regions. Both cortical and subcortical locations are affected. However, in atypical press, may be complicated. Um, complications are present because of the presence of cytotoxic edema also and hemorrhages are also present. There is also isolated involvement of grief, deep gray matter nuclei, brainstem, cerebral hemispheres and exceptionally spinal cord is involved without cerebral hemispheric involvement. So these are the findings of atypical press. So if the clinical history is um, characteristic, then you may consider the possibility of atypical press. Now, Differential diagnosis is chronic hypertensive encephalopathy, which is also known as hypertensive microangiopathy, where the main findings are microhemorrhages present in basal ganglia, pons, and cerebellum seen on SWI imaging. The other conditions which can mimic like press are cerebral infarction, cerebral venous thrombosis, demyelinating disorders, metabolic disorders, and encephalitis. Now, Hininki and McKinney et al. have given the severity of vasogenic edema present in a press on flare images and it can be categorized into mild press, moderate press and severe press. So mild press is when there is cortical or subcortical white matter edema without parenchymal hemorrhage, mass effect, herniation or minimal involvement of only one of the following structures like cerebellum, brainstem or basal ganglia. Okay, how the moderate press is when there are diffuse areas of confluent edema involving cortex to deep white matter but without involvement of the ventricular margin or mild involvement of two of the following structures like cerebellum, brainstem or basal ganglia. Mild mass effect but no herniation of midline shift. So in this moderate press, mild mass effect will be present but herniation and midline shift will be absent. Particularly if parenchymal hemorrhage was present, was also classified as moderate and if you see hemorrhage then it will come into moderate category. Severe press is defined as confluent edema 
extending from the cortex to the ventricle or edema or hemorrhage causing midline shift as well as herniation alternatively there may be involvement of all the three of the following structures cerebellum brain stem and basal ganglia so it comes into severe press um, and it has a poor prognosis so these are the references from where you can further if you want you can further read about the classification and about the press thank you for watching